So what exactly happens when you hit a Spring Boot REST API endpoint? Let's walk through the entire flow step by step. First, your client, whether it's a browser or a mobile app or Postman client, sends an HTTP request to your Spring Boot application. That request is received by Embedded Tomcat, which is the default web server bundled inside Spring Boot. Tomcat listens on a port, usually port 8080, and it's ready to accept incoming connections. Once Tomcat accepts the request, it passes the request to the dispatcher servlet. Think of the dispatcher servlet as the central traffic controller in Spring MVC. It decides where the request needs to go and how it should be handled. It's responsible for managing the flow from entry to exit. The dispatcher servlet doesn't work alone. It calls out to something called handler mapping, which is basically Spring's internal map of all your REST endpoints. It checks the request's path and method, like get slash products or post slash login, and it finds the matching controller method that should handle the request. Once the correct controller is located, Spring calls that method, passing in any parameters it needs, like query strings, path variables, or request bodies. The controller does its job, processing the logic, interacting with the service layer if needed, and returning a result. Now, the controller has returned a Java object, like a response DTO or NTT. But we can't send Java objects directly over HTTP. So Spring uses the HTTP message converter, which automatically converts that object into a format the client can understand, typically JSON or XML. This conversion is seamless and handled behind the scenes based on the client's accept header. Once the conversion is complete, the final HTTP response is assembled, including status codes, headers, and the response body. That response is sent back from the dispatcher servlet through Tomcat and all the way back to the client. The client, whether it's a browser, mobile app, or third-party service, receives the response and processes it accordingly. And that's the complete request lifecycle when you hit a Spring Boot REST API endpoint. Let's review it all together. Step 1, the request is received by Embedded Tomcat. Step 2, it's passed to the dispatcher servlet. Step 3, handler mapping locates the controller. Step 4, the controller logic is executed. Step 5, the HTTP message converter handles the return value. And Step 6, the final response is sent back to the client. It all happens in milliseconds but every step is essential for delivering a clean, restful response. That what is what happens when you hit a Spring Boot REST API endpoint.